a new rotoscoping tool enters the hype cycle, Figma gets a Photoshop-esque boost, and there's a new portfolio tool in town that can make you look like a professional. And stick around until the end to learn how you can win thousands of dollars of training and tools in a contest that starts today. It's Motion Mondays, cue the intro. But first, do you know what the CC prefix stands for in certain After Effects effects? Stick around until the end to uncover this little known piece of Adobe history. Okay, I've got some good news and some bad news about Runway. Let's start with the good news. Runway has launched a new feature for Gen 3 Alpha, their latest AI video model, and it's blowing up social media. You can now upload any image and generate a short video clip from it. I tested it with a beetle photo. This is a Hercules beetle that we saw in a recent trip to Georgia, and a picture of my son with a python wrapped around his neck, which is just something you have. The results were interesting. While clearly AI generated with glitches, it's still impressive tech and you can see tons of examples on X, some that are actually pretty cool. However, here's the bad news. There's controversy brewing. Reports suggest Runway trained their model on scraped YouTube videos. I'm sure this doesn't surprise anyone watching this, which includes copyrighted content. This could and probably will lead to legal issues, especially given YouTube's stance against AI training on their platform. It's a reminder that we're still in the wild west of AI ethics and legality. As the industry grapples with these challenges, some brands are even including no AI clauses in their contracts. The AI roller coaster continues, so do your best not to vomit. SIGGRAPH 2024 wrapped up in Denver last week, showcasing state-of-the-art 3D techniques and technology. Maxon's YouTube channel is a goldmine, replaying all of their three days of presentations, around 20 hours of content, including our own EJ Hassenfratz's ZBrush demo. And there were lots of other things announced and demoed as well. HP unveiled the Z Captus, a nifty device for digitizing materials in minutes, working seamlessly with Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. The Jim Henson Company wowed attendees with digital puppets powered by Unreal Engine, blending traditional puppetry skills, motion capture, and real-time rendering. Clear Angle Studios, DI4D, and Texturing XYZ demonstrated groundbreaking 4D facial capture, enabling much more realistic facial animation that gives some of the best results we've seen. SIGGRAPH remains possibly the nerdiest conference in our world, consistently pushing the boundaries of what's possible in 3D and motion design. So look out for next year's conference if you want to experience the cutting edge for yourself. Our School of Motion summer mini session kicks off today, but there's still time to jump in during orientation week. We're offering After Effects Kickstart and Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed to help more designers dive into animation. These guided sessions feature unlimited critique, access to a global community of motion designers, monthly live streams, project files, and much more. There's simply no better way to level up your skills. So head to the link in the description to join, and we can't wait to see you in class. If you're not following Francois Lefebvre on X, you're missing out on some serious After Effects wizardry. This expression maestro has been posting mind-bending technical experiments that look straight out of cavalry, but are actually powered by After Effects' expression engine. Francois, author of After Effects, The Power of Expression, available at aescripts.com, consistently leaves fellow artists scratching their heads, trying to figure out his techniques. He offers a look at the procedural effects you can pull off once you grasp the way expressions can be used with tools like masks and shape layers. For a deep dive into expressions, check out our expression session course taught by Noel Honig and Zach Lovett, and give Francois a follow, he's doing the Lord's work. Quick tip time, Victoria Nice, Principal Product Manager for Motion Graphics and VFX from Adobe, God, that's a mouthful, recently shared a powerful After Effects feature that many artists overlook render tokens. These allow you to set up custom file naming conventions for your renders using variables like project name, comp name, and render date. Here's a quick walkthrough. Add a comp to your render queue, set the output location, and then click the caret icon next to output to and select custom. Now you can build a template using various properties. For example, add tokens for project name, comp name, date, and file extension. You could save this as a preset and it creates an automatic consistent naming system for your renders. A huge time saver, especially in larger projects pipelines. The latest After Effects beta even includes new tokens like aspect ratio. So give it a try and let us know if this improves your workflow. And please let us know if these quick tips are helpful and we'll keep doing them. Attention aspiring motion designers, our School of Motion scholarship application for the 2024 fall session is now open. This is your opportunity to win a free seat in any of our courses, available to artists worldwide who could use a boost. To apply, enroll in our free application course, which guides you through the process and requires a work submission. We want to ensure scholarships go to those ready to tackle our challenging curriculum, so just know that you'll have to actually create some work. Applications close on August 25th, so don't wait. If our courses have been out of reach, this could be your golden ticket to level up your skills this fall. 
Canva, the massive and still rapidly growing design platform, has acquired Leonardo AI, signaling their continued investment in AI technology. Leonardo is known for its intuitive interface and real-time Canvas feature, allowing users to quickly generate AI images based on simple drawings and prompts, like this image I just made of a bunny sitting on a watermelon. This move, coupled with Canva's recent acquisition of Serif, the makers of Affinity, Designer, and Photo, suggests that they're aiming to compete more directly in the professional design space. While Canva has traditionally catered to non-designers, these acquisitions hint at more powerful, customizable tools on the horizon. It'll be interesting to see how they integrate Leonardo's capabilities and whether this pushes Canva into territory that professional motion designers might find useful. What do you think? Do you think Canva will become a serious player in our industry? Let us know in the comments. Figma users, rejoice! A new plugin brings Photoshop-like functionality to your favorite design tool via an app called Photop. Photop is a free online image editor that very closely mimics Photoshop's interface and features. I'm honestly not sure how it's legal. The tool now integrates directly into Figma via a plugin released by Photop's creators. This means you can now access advanced image editing tools, filters, effects, paint tools, and more without leaving your Figma workspace. It's a big time saver for designers who love Figma, but who miss Photoshop's image manipulation capabilities. This plugin also showcases a unique advantage of cloud-based tools. Not having an app being hosted on your local machine allows developers to more seamlessly integrate separate applications. Check out the link to the plugin in the description. It is free to use. And if you've tried it out, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Could this be the perfect bridge between vector design and raster editing for motion designers who use Figma? As I tell my children almost daily, maybe. If you're looking to refresh your online portfolio, check out Format. This hosting service offers a wide range of beautifully designed modern templates that can make your work shine and make you look like you've got great taste in web design. As someone who often recommends against reinventing the wheel for portfolios, I think you should just use a template. I'm really impressed by Format's clean, professional layouts. They offer great typography, compositions, and even subtle animations built right in. You can easily preview how templates look on mobile devices, ensuring your portfolio looks great on any screen. While it might not be worth switching if you're happy with your current setup, Format is definitely worth considering for those building a new portfolio or looking for an upgrade. The pricing is competitive too, so take a look and let us know what you think. It's time to celebrate our School Motion student of the week, Jamie Browning from Ireland. Jamie, a graphic designer and animator at Viatas, wowed us with his submission for the growth mindset assignment in our Cinema 4D Ascent course. His piece showcases impressive procedural effects, subtle camera work, and excellent texturing and lighting. The final shot featuring this beautiful blooming effect really caught our eye. Jamie's design background shines through in the composition and overall polish, and we're thrilled to see how he's applying his new C4D skills and can't wait to see what he creates next. Congratulations, Jamie, you're killing it. Here's a quick recommendation. If you haven't discovered True Grit Texture Supply yet, you're in for a treat. The site is a gold mine for high quality textures and brushes that bring that coveted analog feel to digital designs. They offer texture packs and brushes for Photoshop, Procreate, Illustrator, and more. I've been using their products for years, especially in Procreate, and they're fantastic for achieving effects that are tricky to recreate from scratch. So whether you're after halftones, comic book styles, or vintage stippled looks, True Grit has you covered, and they frequently run specials and bundles, making it easy to expand your toolkit. Check them out for both tools and inspiration. Your pixels will thank you. Meta has just released version two of their Segment Anything model, SAM2, and it's currently being hyped to infinity, as most AI-enabled things are. This tool can segment objects and track them across video frames in real time. It potentially, and I hate this term, game-changing development for rotoscoping. The speed is really, really impressive, with some tasks that might have taken weeks now accomplished in seconds, like this shot of the gymnastics goat Simone Biles. However, as VFX supervisor Hugo Guerra points out, the results aren't quite production ready for high-end work. There are still issues with flickering, disappearing parts, and limited fine-tuning options. That said, for simpler tasks like maybe placing text behind foreground elements, SAM2 could be incredibly useful. Meta has released a cloud-based demo you can try for yourself. I ran a shot of my younger kids through it, and while the results are really impressive, they're also not nearly good enough for professional VFX work and would require a lot more processing and cleanup to use for anything that required detailed roto. So while it's not the end of manual roto work, it's another exciting step towards more efficient VFX pipelines. And being open sourced, I would expect this to make its way into an After Effects plugin shortly. But I'm curious what you think. 
Is this the future of rotoscoping? Leave a comment below. Review Studio continues to impress not just with their work, but with their commitment to education. Co-founder Austin Bowens recently did a live stream breakdown of an animation inspired by Tame Impala's Borderline. In this hour plus video, Austin walks through his entire process from concept development in Illustrator to the After Effects tricks that create Review's signature glowy, flashy style. There's something for everyone here, whether you're a beginner or an experienced animator. It's a great example of how studios can give back to the community and help elevate the industry as a whole. So huge props to Ravi for their ongoing efforts to share knowledge and inspire fellow artists. Typography lovers, add this to your bookmarks. Uncut.wtf, great URL. This simple but powerful site is a curated collection of free fonts with licenses that allow you to use them commercially. While some offerings have that free font energy, many are surprisingly high quality typefaces. The site's clean interface lets you filter by style, making it easy to find exactly what you need. Uncut is constantly updating its library with a submission form for type designers to share their work. So whether you're working on a personal project or need a fresh look for a client, Uncut might just have the perfect typeface waiting for you. It's a great addition to your design resource toolkit. And as we mentioned, it's free. And finally, big news from School of Motion. We are releasing our first ever animated short film, Metal Heart, on August 14th. And to celebrate, we've partnered with some of our friends to host a massive giveaway. The short was created by our very own Aaron Rabinowitz, and this project grew out of his experience taking our Unreal Engine course with Jonathan Winbush. He subsequently became obsessed with the possibilities of this real-time tool and used it along with several other apps to create the piece. To celebrate the launch on the 14th, we're also releasing a detailed behind the scenes look at the software techniques and assets used in production. And there's more. We're also hosting a massive giveaway worth nearly $5,000 featuring prizes from the Pixel Lab, Artlist, Maxon, Revision Effects, and more. Two lucky winners will even score a year of our new School of Motion All Access, currently only available to companies, which gives you access to every course we offer and the ability to learn at your own pace, but with the unlimited critiques, monthly live streams, and community that we're known for. The contest starts today and you can get all the details at schoolmotion.com slash metalheart. Make sure you enter for a chance to win and also make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss the premiere of the film and the making of coming out next Wednesday. It'll be epic. You see what I did there? And that's it for this week. Remember our trivia question about the CC in Adobe After Effects Effects? Well, it stands for Psychor Cult Effects. See, back in 2001, Adobe acquired software developer Psychor Cult Effects, integrating their effects into After Effects. I'm saying the word effects a lot, aren't I? Anyway, the CC prefix was added to distinguish these from Adobe's in-house effects. This acquisition strategy has actually been key to After Effects dominance, allowing Adobe to rapidly expand the app's capabilities. They've done similar deals with companies like Metal, acquiring their VR tools in 2017, Maxon for Cinema 4D Lite, and Imagineer for Mocha AE. It's a reminder that even software giants like Adobe often grow through smart acquisitions rather than developing everything in-house. Now you've got a new piece of MoGraph trivia to impress probably no one just being honest and that is a wrap make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any of the cool stuff we're up to head to schoolmotion.com slash metal heart to enter our contest and remember you still have a few days to sign up for our summer mini session of after effects kickstart or photoshop and illustrator unleashed all the details and links mentioned are in the description have an awesome week and i'll see you next monday